spinning dial. I'm never quite sure if that uh, spinning dial is telling us we're not quite on yet, but I think we are. And um, so it is Wednesday. There we go. I think we're up. And uh, Uh, and some of you know this, I've mentioned it uh, when I was preaching even, that um, on Wednesdays, one of the things we try to do when we're together, when it doesn't get interrupted by coronavirus updates, is watch General Hospital. So we watched today, it was only interrupted briefly. And um, so thinking about soap operas, thinking about General Hospital in particular, got me thinking about uh, there are always uh, heroes and villains in every story, including soap operas and also including the Bible. So today we want to talk about two uh, wicked women. Hey, Mary Ann, she says, hi, Pastor Steve, and hi, Mom Rotter. And I know you know uh, a little bit about General Hospital, Mary Ann, so... We're going to talk about one of the evil women on General Hospital. There are, we could have picked from a couple different ones. Uh, Hayden Barnes uh, has been an evil one in the past. Ava Jerome has been one of the villainesses. Hey, Tom. And uh, But we're going to go with uh, now. So uh, Nancy's watching, Mom. So let's hold up a picture of Nell here for those of you who watch General Hospital, you'll recognize her. For those of you who don't watch General Hospital, you will see how to, what an evil looking woman she is. In fact, I've considered her one of the best bad characters ever on television. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Nell. Nell, for instance, tried to make Carly and got Carly locked up in a mental hospital. And uh, then she tried to make Sonny think that he had an affair with her and then she gave Michael's baby away to Brad and hid that fact from Michael told him that the baby had died and she also left Michael to die in a burning car although he did live she beat up Willow trying to flee the country with Wiley and knocked her unconscious and she got Shiloh to marry her so that she can inherit his shares of ELQ when he died. And she refused recently to sign off on Wiley, the baby's needed heart surgery. Okay. Oh, and there's one other thing I didn't put on my list here, but I remembered it. She actually had uh, killed her original fiance. He was a kayaker and she punctured the hole in his kayak and he drowned to death. Terrible, terrible. So that's Nell. All right, Mom, we'll put her aside for a minute. We're going to compare Nell with a character from the Bible. Hey, Josh and Lorraine. Hey, Patty Rosie. And uh, so this is Jezebel. We have Nell and Jezebel. And uh, this is a little thing about Jezebel from 1 Kings chapter 21. In 1 Kings chapter 21, Jezebel's husband, Ahab, wanted to buy a vineyard from a man named Naboth. He wanted to put a vegetable garden in there because it was near his house. He said, I'll buy it from you or I will give you a different vineyard that is comparable to yours. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my father's. In other words, this is a family vineyard. I'm not going to give it to you. So it says, Ahab became sullen, and he lay down on his bed and ate no food. Jezebel came in, saw him, and said, why are you so sullen, and why are you not eating food? He said, because I asked Naboth to sell me his vineyard, and he won't sell it to me or trade me for another vineyard. Jezebel said, listen, let your heart be joyful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth. Well, she does, and this is how she does it. She wrote letters and signed Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. He was the king. And she sent them to all the people in Naboth's city. And she said, proclaim a feast and seat Naboth at the head of the table and have a bunch of worthless men sitting around him. 
and let them testify about Naboth that he cursed God and cursed the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So they have a feast. They put Naboth at the head of the table. Two worthless men come sitting on his left and his right, and they start saying, I heard this man cursing the king. I heard this man cursing God. And so they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. And Jezebel went home and said to Nahab, uh, listen, you can have that vineyard now because Naboth is dead. So we've got two evil ladies here. We've got Jezebel and we've got Nell. Okay. So the first thing I want you to think about is which one do you think is more evil? We're going to hold them up in just a minute and we're going to let you vote. I'll tell you how you can vote. But first, I want to sing you a little song. So, Mom, you can rest your arms there for a minute. Okay. This, this song is about what life would be like for all of us if we didn't have God in our lives. Because we can look at other people, whether it's Nell or Jezebel, and say, boy, how awful they are. But how awful would we be without God in our lives? And that's what this song is about. It's called Without You. Without you, I would have no hope, and I'd be all alone. Without you, without you, I could not be strong, and I could not go on. Without you, without you. Would I be if you didn't love me? And who would I be without you? And who would I be if you didn't save me? And who would I be without you? Without you, life would make no sense. Dreams would always end without you. Without you, spring would not appear, and storms would never clear. Without you, without you, and who would I be if you didn't love me? Would I be without you? Who would I be if you didn't save me? Who would I be without you? Without you. So, you know, Mom and I were talking about that reality that if it wasn't for the grace of God, who would we be today? Each one of us, he changes us. He allows us to be the people that he wanted us to be, good people, righteous people, with the righteousness of Christ in our lives, instead of the old nature that would have taken us down a bad path like a Nell or a Jezebel. So we're talking about voting here, okay? So what we're going to do is, oh, Val says Helena Cassidyne. That's a good one, Val. Lena Castine, very oh. evil, very evil. <laughs> Mom agrees with that. <laughs> but that's not one of the two choices here. So if you're watching live or if you're watching this later, this is how you're going to get to vote. You're going to either vote N, a letter N for Nell, or a letter J for Jezebel. Okay, now we're going to wait the whole week because some people watch this broadcast later during the week. So we're going to count all the N's. Hold her up again. N's for Nell, is she the most evil? Or J for Jezebel, is she the most evil? We're going to count up. Now, Mom, who do you think? Without a doubt, Nell. She's going with Nell. Okay, so Mom's a Nell voter. Her her, her N counts on the Nell, Nell side. I'm actually going to go with Jezebel. I'm going to cast my vote as Jezebel, and then we'll find out next week who really is considered the most evil between these two. Now, I want to make this clear. This is not a popularity contest between mom and me. So you're not voting for Nell because you like mom better, okay? Because I know that every time that mom's on the show, we get way more viewers, okay? And that's all right. doesn't hurt my feelings. It is my mom, and I love her. But vote for who you think is 
the most evil? Is it Nell? Is it Jezebel? Share this on your page so more people can vote. N's and J's, that's what we're looking for. And I'll see you tomorrow, and we'll count up the votes, and Mom will be on next week. We'll, we'll have the votes for you. Uh, God bless you guys. Be thankful that we have God in our lives so we don't have to be like those two. We can be the righteousness of Christ and be loving, godly people. All right? See you later on. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks, Mom.